Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is a big one from Board and Dice called Barcelona. This is a two to four player game with a single player mode that takes roughly about 60 to 90 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And this game here is basically an action management game. You're gonna be setting up the main game board, the secondary game board, and then each player will have their own unique player board they need to set up. Additionally, there's extra tokens and tiles you'll need, as well as a bag full of citizens, and you're going to be basically taking an action on your turn. You will select two citizens and you will place them down on one of the main district areas or like in between cross directions of streets in Barcelona. When you do that, you're going to take two actions. You're going to take an action that is vertical and an action that is horizontal, as well as perhaps even vertical if you choose the middle section. Each of these actions are going to let you do certain things like build the streets of Barcelona, place your trolley down and move it across the map, being able to construct new buildings or purchase new uh, constructions for your specific player board, or just simply being able to score additional victory points or gaining victory point conditions. The game is going to progress as you start to build new buildings, putting out the civilians that are now in those buildings into the civilization tracks, and when one of those tracks fills, the game is going to end. The player with the most points, as well as the best victory conditions, will be the winner of the game. Let's talk about the setup, and of course how to play, and finally my review. To set up the game Barcelona, the first thing you do is you take out the main game board. Take it and place it within reach of all players. Then, go ahead and take the bonus tiles, they're going to be the square ones with the little flip over section, and place them face up on the left hand side of the board. Next, if this is your first game, ignore this, but otherwise, take each of these tokens here that represent the different actions in the game and randomize them around the playing field, each with their own unique slot. There's going to be a track on the right hand side where you're going to place each player's tokens, their colored tokens, in the space that is the starting space that has a token on it. Then you're going to go ahead and take three random objectives, they're the oval ones, and place them face up in the three different sections. Next, you're then going to, depending on if it's a two or three player game, place civilians on the civilian tracks. There are three tracks, the blue one, the red one, and the green one. If you're playing a two player game, go ahead and cover the two and two slash three spaces with civilians of the proper color. You'll do that for your blue, your green, and your red. And then afterwards, place a scoring token for each player that's playing the game at zero around the game track. Then the main board is done. The next thing you'll do is take a look at the secondary game board. The secondary game board is going to have four open positions where you can gather unique objectives just specifically for your game board. You'll place uh, four of them out and the rest of them are gonna be stacked face down on the left hand side. The one thing you wanna do though before you do that is take out any of the objectives that you have placed that are the oval ones that are the exact same type. So if you have a max five coins one, take that out from the secondary scoring objectives and remove it from the game, but just for this game. The next is you're going to have five different locations that you're going to be building in Barcelona. There is a total of seven of them, so just remove two, place them from the lowest count, negative three, negative two, negative one, and in each of the sections of the game board. So you should have five different types, and it should go from negative three to negative one in each of the areas. Leave the bottom portion blank. Then you have your game board. On your game board, you're going to, at the top right, place one of your little tokens, your little discs, in the first space on the building track. Then, place a cube on the bottom section of your game board, um, in, in the next section, in the bottom space of the game board, that's going to have a times one all across until it gets to times two times two. These are going to be using to go up and down. Then there's a trolley section. Place your trolley and provide that you've actually placed the stickers on your trolley and place a cube in each of the rectangles across. Then you have your streets. Your streets are going to start with the thin ones and you're going to have four in the first position, six in the next, and then you're going to have five of the big ones, uh, which are called wide streets, in the next location. Every single one of the hexagon spaces, you're going to place one of your hexagon tokens. It should fill all of them. Next is you're going to gain a coin, you're going to gain a cloth, and you're going to place these little square uh, spaces in each of the spaces that has a square symbol. Last but not least, as far as your player board is concerned, you'll be placing discs. You'll place two discs in the first three positions and then one disc in the last two. 
Each player is going to start with two random civilians. You'll take all your civilians that are left that are not on the game board and put them in this bag. And then you're going to gather two face down that only you as the player can see for the beginning of the game. Everything else is set aside on the side of the game board. You are going to have the three different buildings, which are going to be the type one or tier one, tier two, and tier three from green to pink to blue. All the resources, being coins and cloth, will be set aside as well within reach. You won't be using any of the extra victory objectives that are oval. You won't be using any extra buildings. Um, and you'll set aside the little triangle buildings as well, which we'll be using in the game. The last, last thing that you do in the game is make sure that you have these large buildings they have a little one on them. Um, make sure that they're placed in their own categories with ones, twos, threes, and fours being in their own unique areas, set aside and stacked up for players to gather when they need to. There you go, that's the setup for Barcelona. Let's talk about playing it now. Playing the game actually is quite simple. You'll go through your turn sequence, you'll end your turn and you will pass. And you will keep going back and forth until you reach a scoring sequence and there are three of them in the game. A scoring sequence is triggered once a civilian or citizen reaches one of the ends of one of the three tracks, in which case you're going to do a few certain things. And after you hit the third one, each player will get equal turns and the game will end. Now, how do you play your turn? Well, you start the game with two of your civilians slash citizens, and uh, you're going to be placing them down somewhere on the main game board. Uh, you can select any of these different areas here. These are called intersections. And when you place them, you can go ahead and place them in, in any combination of uh, top or bottom that you would like as well. When you place a character down or anything down on a space in the area here, you're gonna have to either gain the benefits or pay the costs as long as it is revealed. So if I wanted to place in this middle area section, intersection here, I will pay a coin from my supply. And then I will take the actions. I will take any action that is vertical, horizontal, or a diagonal. And each of these are gonna be unique actions in the game. And if you're playing the base game for the first time, you won't have these. Uh, otherwise, it could be in a completely different random order. Each action is unique that involves building roads, etc., which we'll go over in a second here. But you will take your actions in any order that you'd like, and then you're gonna to check to see if you can build. In order to build, uh, one of the square spaces on the game board must have uh, at least two adjacent people. Each of the buildings here, green, pink, and blue, have requirements. The green one is two of any type, the pink one is one pink civilian and one of any type, and the blue is one blue and two of any type. And they must be in one of the four positions, or two or, two or three of the four positions, in a space in order for you to do the building. You will take the top civilians from the adjacent spaces, you will take the appropriate building tier and you will place it down on that area, scoring or gaining any benefits. Thusly then flipping it over, taking the civilians that you now have placed in that building and putting them on one of these tracks here. You'll put blue on blue, pink on pink, and green on green. After you have placed your civilians down, uh, then you're going to gain victory points based on whatever is showing the lowest amount of victory points. And in this case, because we covered up one, we would score two points. We would actually move our marker two spaces. After we have scored our points and checked to make sure that if in fact we had actually moved our civilians to one of these end piece points here and done the scoring, if not, we're just going to pass our turn, take two new characters from the bag face down, and everybody else will do that. And we will rinse and repeat. Now, let's talk about our actions, and then we'll talk about the different scoring sections and end of game. There are a lot of actions in this game, and I'm not gonna go over everything specifically in particular, but I will talk about each of them. The first and main and easy action is the two coins. You simply gain two coins. You'll take two coins from the supply, you'll put them in your character board. Uh, in your character board, you have a limited number of spaces, but they will open up as you take these square concrete blocks and place them on the secondary board. But for right now, you only get four. So if you take two coins, then you're full. You can, however, replace a cloth for a coin and a coin for a cloth if you're full and you need to switch it out. The next action you have here is to build these buildings here. These buildings represent the five different types on the secondary board. They have a cost on them. It's either gonna be three, uh, two, or one coin, starting at three. And you're gonna have unique actions on each of them that will let you do specific unique things, lets you gain victory points, and move up on this multiplier track. 
if I wanted to take, let's say, I'll just take this one randomly here. This one is actually going to let me place one of my uh, tokens or one of one of these little, um, this, oh, I guess they're called like district areas and place it on the game board here. It'll also let me score 10 points and move up twice on the multiplier track. But basically all you need to know is that if you go here, you can buy one of these and do what they say. The next one here is the multiplier bonus, which will let you move your little token here up on the multiplier track. The multiplier track, just as an example, when you score in each of the different scoring rounds of the game, you're going to be checking to see the different scoring objectives and multiplying your main score by whatever your multiplier is on this game board, whether it be zero, one, two, three, or even four. If you ever gain more multipliers than you have, you're just going to get two victory points instead. Uh, this is the concrete block action space. The concrete block action space is pretty simple. You will take one of your concrete blocks, you will place it on the secondary game board in an adjacent space, up, down, left, or right, from the starting or attached uh, adjacently to any other concrete block and gain the benefit underneath whatever location you place it on. Thusly, it'll also allow you to not only gain the benefit, but also open you up for more resources that you can use throughout the game. Now, then we have two actions. I'll just talk about these together. You have the double uh, narrow, uh, double narrow streets and the wide street. If you get these actions, they will let you take your streets from your main game board, always from left to right, and place them down on the game board. You'll score points based on how many roads are in that area and what you're connected to. The small ones will score one for each adjacent road connected in that area, and the large wide ones will score you two points. Of course, like I said before, if there's anything that's revealed that you cover over, you will gain the benefit, whether it be cloth, coins, or victory points. Then you have the trolley. The first time you activate the trolley, you're simply going to take your trolley and place it down on one of the streets. And then every time afterwards, you'll move one or two spaces. However, your own streets are free. You will gain the street bonus. You will then be able to spend a coin to put out a, a passenger on a street that is not occupied by another trolley or passenger and gain the specific action of whatever street it is that you are on. Then the next action is victory. Victory conditions are very, very important. These are very important in the game. There's four to choose from. If you take this action, you'll be able to select one of them and place it down in one of the top five positions of your game board. This will allow you to score victory points based on whatever it is you're looking for. Two points for each unique building that you've built, or uh, two points for each connected road that you have, etc., etc. These are very useful. Speaking of victory points, uh, you can actually get multipliers. There's a victory point multiplier. Your board obviously shows a times one at the top portion. If you actually would like to, you can spend the cost, take this action, and move your multiplier up. So instead of times one for each road that you have connected, it's times two now. Just like the multiplier here, now you have it for your specific victory conditions. But don't forget your multiplier multiplies everything here, but specifically only here for your objectives. This one here is three victory points and a cloth. And this one here allows you to take your, uh, your little street connection corners and place them down on the game board. This is great because whenever somebody places on your area, you can actually um, gain some benefits. So it's really important that you do so. And you'll also, whenever people place on them, based on what your board has, you'll be either getting one, two, or three benefits of the options available to you based on how many of these street intersections are on the field. And those are basically all the actions in the game. Moving up the multiplier track, coins, you can get victory points, and uh, your, your scrolls here, or your sheets, I should say. Cloth, cloth. <laughs> and you'll use everything. When it says minus one, minus two, or minus one, minus one, or whatever, if you ever want to do a thing, in order to do it, you have to pay the cost. If you ever want to place a thing on a specific area, you have to pay the cost. Buildings. You know how buildings work. You can do the tier one, tier two, or tier three. You can overbuild if you would like. You can build on top of other buildings as long as you meet the tier conditions. One down below, two or three above. If there's three, you can't overbuild onto that. And that's basically the idea of the game. When each of these tracks reach the end, with one of just one of them reaches the end, you're actually going to go ahead and 
flip the uh, scoring portion over after you've scored it. Like for instance, this is two points for each cloth you have with a max of five times the multiplier, as well as you'll move all your multipliers back down to the uh, middle section or the spot that you start on. And then you'll continue and you'll do the next one. Two points for each uh, intersection that you have times the multiplier. You'll then flip this over and you will push all these multipliers down again. And you'll do that up until the very end. At the end of the game, you're gonna score basically whatever you have already scored previously. Plus, you'll just check your board. If there are any, uh, they look like kind of like uh, flowers that are on your game board that are available, you check the far right position and you score that many bonus points, whether it be for your concrete, whether it be for placing down passengers, uh, and then you'll also score for each of your individual objectives that you purchase from this game board here, times the multiplier, times the main multiplier. Then whoever has the most points is the winner. I know it sounds super confusing and complicated, so here's my breakdown. Take two dudes from the bag. Place two dudes on any intersection. Then gain the actions available to you, either up, down, left, or right. You'll just check and see where they go. Uh, then after your actions, try and make a building. You have to if you can. Then after you try to make a building, place your civilians down, score the lowest number of victory points, and pass. There's a scoring event. If you reach the end of each of these tracks, the end of the game, check all your points, plus any red points on your board, and whoever has the most is the winner. Hopefully that explains it pretty well. TLDR. <laughs> I did it at the very end though. Hopefully it's still useful. So there's no getting away from it. Like most board and dice games, this is a game that the turn sequence is quite simple and straightforward, but there are a lot of actions. Actions connect to each other. You can gain bonus actions and each phase kind of represents its own unique a huge amount of choices. And to separate each of the different combinations is pretty crazy because basically Barcelona, just like most of their games, has so many options, even for just an action management game. Do you want to go the route of placing down lots and lots of roads and intersections? Do you want to try and gain a bunch of bonus buildings and victory conditions, scoring in each of the different scoring rounds, or just a ton of a lot of everything? It is soaked full of theme. Basically the idea of Barcelona being a very old city, it's very overpopulated and it's very, very poor. And eventually some dude decides to, after the walls have been torn down to make an extra district. And now you're kind of in charge of making this district and enhancing it for the community, the population so that it's larger and there's more people available to kind of leave those other areas and come to this new area, which is a great idea as well also a way to kind of get the community from being like so impoverished. And you're, yeah, you're taking part in that. And the theme is excellent. You do feel like you're building a city, you feel like you're making buildings, and you feel like you're constructing something throughout the entire game, and it's a beautiful experience as well. All the board and dice games have a really beautiful experience, and the theme is really nicely attached. This one in particular has a really great experience and theme, and I very much so enjoy it. Uh, so as far as quality goes with this game, it is excellent. The high quality pieces and tokens don't lose anything. That's the first big thing. But if you are good at keeping pieces together, because losing a piece in none of these games is terrible, uh, then you're going to love the quality of the game. Once again, though, like another any other board and dice game, there's not an insert in the game. So everything's going to go in baggy. So the setup process is quite a pain and placement inside a box is going to be basically in bags. I wish someday they will make some cheap type of insert where I can put things in so they're easier to be organized as opposed to making my own. That being said, quality, art, beautiful. These are 10 out of 10 games as far as how the theming intertwines with it. And if you love complexity, this is another one of those games where it's not at the 10 out of 10 level for complexity where some of the board and dice games are, but I'd say it's probably a seven or even an eight. Yes, all the actions are very simple and they're very structured where you place your citizens will let you check horizontal, vertical, and perhaps even diagonal to score bonus, to take your actions for your turn. And it's very streamlined. Take my actions, hopefully build a building, place my civilians, score. Did we reach a scoring round? draw two and pass. And that's all you do back and forth. But there's a lot of combinations and even things in the rules that I didn't even cover. When uncovering things from your game board, for instance, if it reveals a symbol, you'll gain it. Whether it be a bonus on the multiplier track or extra coins or the availability to take extra actions when people place on your intersections, there's a load of different things. The fact that this main game board where yes, you place the concrete, when you place them, you score victory points or you score coins, uh, you can score all kinds of things. But as it progresses outward, the benefits get better. 
each of the different houses, and there are seven in total, and five that you get to choose from the begin for the main for each game that you play, will give you bonus actions that turn free, which are super useful, and the fact that these main singular objectives that go onto your main game board and are just scoring for you are extremely relevant, extremely important, just as important as the main act, the main scoring on this game board here. And these pieces will never be in here. You remove them from the game. Uh, your resources are nice and simple. You have coins and you have cloth and you'll use those to make build buildings and build certain things or gain objectives. And it's very well detailed on each of the spaces, even though it has a lot of complexity if you look at everything all at once. Try to piece this game down into its points. Just look at the actions you're taking. Think about what actions do I want? Then what actions am I taking? And what's the best route about going about it? And in what, what order? And then what's the best building I can build? The most points I can get and then draw two new and pass. And if you're thinking about it in that way, you're going to love this game. I think Barcelona is probably one of my favorite games from Board and Dice. It's tight, it's fluid, it's straightforward. Yes, there's a lot of complexity. Yes, there's a lot of actions, but if you're okay and you can compartmentalize and just determine what's best for you, you're going to dig this game. There are so many cool little features and functions that kind of pertain to not only the story of the game and this hustling and bustling city, but also what you can do for yourself and how you can maximize your value. Uh, the, even the secondary game board, which I usually don't like in a lot of games, this one had a lot of value to me. The, the ability to select buildings or victory points and even just this little area here, which just gives you kind of a bonus, but also pertains to how many resources you can control and collect is awesome. The fact that you can build or overbuild, there's also tiny buildings that function just like normal Normal buildings but they they function kind of on this diagonal track here but they're not going to score you additional points um, or, or things that maybe the big ones will however you'll still be able to take the civilians and place them on the track which will score you victory points each and every time don't miss out on placing down civilians to score those points they're very very important and if you miss out on making a building because remember you have to if you can it's going to kind of keep you in line with the game and of course, at the end, it's all about your secondary mission objectives and making sure you complete those. Another thing too is these bonuses. Whenever you build a, a building in any of these horizontal rows, the first one is gonna score you five points and you'll flip this little token over. So yeah, there's a lot of little things to cover in this game. Yes, it's a little complex, but if you're probably used to these type of games and played them before, all you wanna know is, is it fun? And this game is damn fun. I really, really enjoyed this game. I love the theme, I love the complexity, and I love how tight and simple it is all at once. It does a really great job of that. What I don't love is the setup. <laughs> I don't love the fact that it doesn't have an insert and that uh, you have to be very careful with the pieces. But otherwise, and I think that's pretty much true for most board and dice games for me, this is a wonderful game. I'm keeping this in my collection. It's gonna stay there for a while. I'm gonna bring it out when I can. Obviously, this is gonna be a little bit of a thicker game. It's not like a family, simple, easy to play game. But for those of you who love board games, you love a little bit more of a meaty game, but not something overly complex, this is your go-to. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Barcelona by Board and Dice. If you're interested in taking a look, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up the game. You can also, if you'd like, and you think we've earned your subscription, if you watch more than one of our videos here on this channel, please, Subscribe, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more of our videos. We show you games like this one here and a lot of indie and Kickstarter games so you can go ahead and check those out. All right guys, website is unfilteredgame.com, blog, blog post, giveaways, Kickstarter, listen more. Wednesdays is our whatnot stream at 6.30 p.m. PST and our 6.30 p.m. PST on Sunday is on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube where we play games just like this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to building the new district of Barcelona or part of Barcelona with you next time.